Hi, and welcome to Module 9 of Video Lecture 2. In the previous lecture, we talked about the, lim the limits of sequence and series. The natural thing might not be talk might be now to talk about limits of functions, but before we do so, limits of sequence and series give us another bonus, in that they let us define a few more properties of sets that will be very essential going on in the course. We talked a little bit about properties of sets um, before that are open and closed. Um, when we talked about delimiters of sets. So to remind you all, for a discrete set like this, we used curly braces, right? They meant the set consists the set A consists of the points 0, 1, and 3. If the set were a closed set, we let it be square braces. If the set were open set, that parentheses, we can deal with mixed, open and closed, and so on. But we didn't really define well open and closed. The reason we didn't do that at the time was to define it well, we need to understand limits. Now that we have some idea about limits, we can actually define it. So let's begin with open, um, an open set. This is an open set, 0 to 1. It's pretty much the modal open set you learn about when learning about open sets. But what makes it open? Okay, well, let's draw it as a number on the number line. Here's 0, here's 1. And what this means is that the set consists of every single point on the real numbers between 0 and 1, but not including 0 and 1. Now that might seem kind of obvious, but think about it for a second. So you're defining a set which consists of every single point between 0 and 1, but not 0 and 1. Where does the set end? Is there a point at which, it, close to zero, in which it ends? And the answer is no. There is no point close to zero at which it ends. There's always another point closer and closer to zero, such that you can always move a little further to the left over here and never get to zero. Similarly, there's always another point to the right of wherever you are at um, left of one, such that if you move a little to the right, you hit that point, but don't yet hit 1. You can always go further towards, towards 1 and always go further towards 0, as long as the distance, the amount you go towards 1 and 0, gets smaller and smaller and smaller. In other words, there is no minimum point between in this open set here, between 0 and 1, and there is no maximum point between 0 and 1. You can always go closer to 0, and you can always go closer to 1 without reaching them. That, intuitively, is a definition of an open set. An open set is one which you can always move a little further in any direction um, without leaving the set. There's always some amount you can move. It could be really, really small, but there's always some amount you can move and stay in the set proper. When your set is some subset of the real numbers, we can um, conceptualize this by thinking of little open ball, little balls little balls of some radius, say epsilon, positive radius. So it's a little ball of a positive radius, and an open set is one in which you can always find some radius such that that ball fits in the set. Right? So no matter what point you choose in a set, right, say this point, you can always draw a ball of some radius and stay in that set. And the reason is, what we said, no matter how close you go to zero, there's always points around that point so that you can draw a ball and stay in the set. That is an open set. Open sets have other definitions too, um, as do closed sets, which are the opposite of open sets. This is a closed set. A closed set consists of all points between zero and one, including zero and one. And a closed set is not open. How do we understand that? Well, let's choose the point zero here. We cannot draw any balls around zero because if you move even, no matter how much you move to the left of zero, you're out of the set. Zero is the very last point in the set. There are no points to the left of zero. Therefore, you cannot move to the left of zero at all and stay in the set. Therefore, the set is not open. It's closed. This is a closed set. It contains 
intuitively its boundary points, its endpoints. Less intuitively or more formally, it relates very closely to limits. Okay, let's say I made the sequence here. Um, and we can write this again on the board. Monotechnical difficulties. <laughs> um, zero to one. Now I would make the sequence limit as n goes to infinity of one over n. Now this is a little bit of a shorthand for the sequence. I could have also written limit as capital N goes to infinity of the sequence one over n, where n equals um, one to infinity, sorry, to capital N. They mean the same thing. I'm just being a little fast and loose here as the book tends to be. Um, what is this? Well, first, consider every point in the sequence. For every finite n, n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, that point, that point in the sequence is within the set, 0, 1. What about its limit points? Well, its limit, what's the limit of the series here? I'm sorry, the sequence here, most n goes to infinity, this thing goes to 0. So the limit is equal to 0. For the closed set, 0 is within the set. Therefore, the set contains the limit of the sequence. More generally, a closed set contains limit points of all its sequences. The limit, for roughly speaking, a closed set contains limit points of sequences. An open set does not. Let's try the sequence starting at 2 now um, of 1 over n. Well, 1 half is in the sequence, and 1 third, and so on. In fact, every single, um, every single one of these points here, I want to be the more exact because I want to start at 2. Every point in the sequence for any finite n, for any finite n, is in the open set 0 and 1. However, the limit as n goes to infinity is not in 0 and 1. Therefore, this set here, therefore the open set does not contain, so sequences in the open set do not contain Sorry. The open set does not contain the limit points of all sequences that are within the open set, and therefore the open set is not closed. So that's a closed set. And that's probably one of the more important set definitions, and you can only really understand that by understanding limits. Okay. There's some other set properties too we should talk about. Um, bounded, a bounded set has a bound. Um, you most commonly encounter a bounded set in the context of a subset of Euclidean space. In other words, a subset of the real line or real three-dimensional space, whatever. Um, a bounded set has the distance um, for any point in that set less than some bound. There exists some bound such that this is true. So there exists some b such that this is true for all x in your set. Um, here your set might be this. This double line is a norm. We'll talk more about norms a bunch when we look at um, linear algebra. But a norm you've done before when you deal with distances. For instance, if you're in three-dimensional space, then that's equal to the length of the vector, which is x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared if, or in other words, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, depending on how you want to represent your three dimensions. That's your distance. There are lots of norms in the, in the universe. Um, that's the distance norm. It's the most common norm. We mentioned this a little bit when we talked about uh, spaces. Okay. That's a bounded set. A bounded set has a bound. Sets that involve infinity do not have bounds. I should note that this set here even though this is an open parenthesis here, is, clo is a closed set because the limit of anything in this ser sequence might go to infinity, but that's in the set, so it contains limit points. On the other hand, it also contains all balls, so this set is also open because <laughs> it contains all balls. Um, you can never draw, for any point, you can draw a ball around it and stay in the set. So things with an infinity tend to have interesting definitions. They can be closed and open at the same time. Okay. 
And but however, they're not bounded. If there's infinity, it's not bounded. It has no end. You can't put a finite number and encompass the entire set in it. Compact is an incredibly useful set property in trying to understand optimization in particular. We're not going to present the general definition of this, that any um, open cover of a set has a finite subcover. Rather, we'll discuss the definition only in that's only used for um, real numbers. And that is that any set that's closed, any subset of the real numbers that's closed and bounded, or any subset of Euclidean space in general, that's closed and bounded is compact. So if x is a subset, of some real numbers, some space, uh, then closed and bounded implies compact. Compact intuitively means what it means in English. The space is, in some sense, compact. It's closed, so it has all its limit points, all its endpoints, and it's bounded, so it doesn't go on forever. Closed and bounded, um, compact spaces, compact sets, admit much more like are much more likely to admit. Um, maxima and minima than ones that are open. Here's a simple example of that. We'll do much more later. Um, let's say I have an open set from 0 to 1. So it does not include 0 or 1. Let's say I draw a line like this. We haven't dealt with limits of functions yet, but bear with me. Um, what's the biggest point on this function here? I'd say the function is f of x equals to x. What's the largest point on that function? I don't know, right? I can always get closer and closer to 1 without ever reaching it, so there's no maximum to that function. So we generally try to have sets that are compact. Same thing over here. If we had an unbounded set, right, um, 0 to infinity, or forever, and our set were like, and our function were like that, where's the maximum? It's at infinity. That's not our point, so it has no maximum. Um, so compact sets can be really useful. We can partition sets too. This is really here or there. But if we have a set A, we can partition it um, into, say, set B and set C. B is the shaded one. Um, set partition, used occasionally, not that much, just to be complete here. Um, final ones that are more important. This is a convex set. A convex set is a set such that any two points the, any, any line you draw between two points is also in the set. Um, this Pac-Man set is not convex because you can draw a line over here and the points on the line over here are not in the set. Convex set, sets have some utility when trying to understand um, maximization because they help provide a unique maximum or minimum. minimum. We'll get to that more when we talk about maxima and minima. You can make any set convex by taking what's called the convex hull. And that basically means you just close off the set in the minimum way possible to ensure that it is convex. Now any point, if this is the new set, this whole shaded area, then any point in the set is um, any line you draw between two points in the set stays in the set. Similarly, you can make any um, open set closed by just adding all of the limit points. For instance, this is called set closure. You can make it closed by adding 0 and 1. Now it's a closed set. Um, these are set properties. Again, this might seem kind of scattershot, but with the addition of the very last module, Module 10, which would be about limits of functions and continuity, will finally have all the building blocks we need to start doing um, calculus and looking at real examples in political science. I'm not that we haven't looked at examples so far, but we'll have the building blocks we need to start to move on. Thank you.